Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the best NASes to buy in 2018 for virtual machines. Okay, so before we get right down to it, let's talk about some of the parameters because there are a lot of NASes out there that support virtual machine use in one form or another. First and foremost, I'm only going to look at desktop NASes for this video. Yes, there are a whole host of um, enterprise level rack mount devices out there, but virtual machine use on rack mounts has always existed. What I want to focus on is the number of you users out there looking at desktop devices so you haven't got big rack cabinets and a whole server room where you can have virtual machines running in a desktop appliance and this has become very very cool at the moment and moreover with big brands like Synology and QNAP providing very varied solutions in order to do this with their own first party apps for virtual machine use, it has never been more relevant than right now in 2018 to look at some of these solutions. Now, all the devices I'm going to talk about today uh, on our top and our top three virtual machine NASes provide two things. One, they provide support to your first-party applications such as VMware, Windows Server, and um, uh, Citrix and stuff like that. Basically, all of those virtual machine applications. On top of that, they all arrive with their own first-party virtual machine management software and again so what that means is you've got a nice bespoke range of uh, solutions for you using third party software that you might already have or use them as and use their own deployable application for virtual machines now all of these are insanely powerful NASes but moreover they are expensive so none of these should be the sort of things you should be considering for running Plex in the corner of your room these are business end NASes moreover they have all got featured in them the sort of hardware that, although it can be put towards virtual machine use, will also support a myriad of different applications from backups to uh, entire uh, content management systems, email, download servers, the works. Also, not all of these NASs were released this year because that's the point. This isn't the best NAS of ones that have been released this year. That would be churlish in the extreme and would suggest that no NASs have existed before. These are the best NASs to buy at the end of 2018 for virtualization, regardless of when they were released. Because sometimes you can get a bargain when the newer version of something isn't as good as the old. First up is a QNAP, the TS1677X. Now, I mentioned it in the blog and I am going to mention it here. It's almost as if some people at QNAP all got together, just sat there, the bods from R&D, and sat around at a table and said, what is the most insane thing we could ever build in desktop form? And this is it, the TS1677X. It is mental, okay? And I know that's not a PC term, but I'm sorry, it is a crazy device. This retails at £2,300 and is only rivaled by two other QNAPs. That is the TS1685, and even then, I wouldn't say rival, I'd say sharing the podium, and the TS2888X, that insane AI deep learning machine. Other than those two, which can't make this list either because one, they don't outdo this in hardware terms, or two, in the case of the 2888X, was only released recently, this device here, the 1677X, is my personal pick for the best VM NAS right now. It supports that all those great third-party applications that you can buy separately with their own licenses or QNAP's own very bespoke and fluid and manageable virtualization applications in Virtualization Station, Linux Station, and Container Station. Again, check out my comparison of those three in an older video. But as you can see from the specs on the screen, it's got that brand new Ryzen CPU, the Ryzen 7, which is an 8-core CPU, 3 gigahertz per core with hyper-threading. On top of that, it can be expanded up to 3.7 gig once in burst with 16 to 64 gig of DDR4 memory with promises and talk of it going higher as needed. It's got six USB ports for a multitude of different applications, SSD bays, hard drive bays, M2 SSD bays, PCIe slots for expandability, audio in and out. It's got four LAN, 2G, 10GBE, so you've got 10GBE networking for those important connections or to route those into switches with the 1GBE still for internet and other network accessibility. USB 3.1 Gen 2 for faster 10, GB, uh, 10 gigabit backups to external devices and support of graphics cards, so big G, uh, GTX numbers, the 1080 and stuff like that can be installed in this device 
for number crunching, deep learning, AI application, smart home, IoT, the lot. But again, when it comes to virtual machines, this device gives you the ability to give a whole lot of hardware to multiple VMs. And that's always a problem with virtual machines. The um, disbursement of the hardware inside and how much you can give to individual virtual machines and still maintain the overall system level. Remember that any virtual machine runs on layers. So the ground layer is the hardware. The next layer is the software that lives on the NAS and after that an application you deploy from the software to run the VMs and host the VMs. You want as few layers between the VM and the hardware as possible. And when you do add more layers, more hardware resources are utilized to support the system. This gives so much hardware that it is very hard to create unless you're gonna go higher than about six to 10 bespoke first party app VMs, it's gonna be very hard not to have powerful VMs for everyone involved. And that's why it's my favorite NAS for virtual machines in 2018 right now. For all the bells and whistles that that QNAP had, this one is for people that don't want to muck around and want something easy to deploy. At the lower price tag of £1,900, give or take, the Synology DS3617XS is the Synology answer to QNAP's VM NAS. This device, first and foremost, let's get it out of the way, the elephant in the room, this device is nearly two years old, yet it's in this list. And the reason it's in this list is it's still the most powerful, capable NAS that Synology have ever put out there in desktop form. This device arrives with a quad-core Xeon, and that quad-core Xeon is backed up with 16 gig of DDR4 ECC memory. Five years of manufacturer's warranty, so long-term support, as well as the Synology replacement service, which is an advanced replacement um, service you have in the background in the event of any hardware problems. On top of that, USB 3 ports for external storage, none, no USB 3.1 Gen 2, and expansion slots that let you add up to um, 24 more drives of storage in this device, as well as four LANs and PCIe slots for adding 10 GBE or SSD M2 cache. Why is this device in the top three despite its age? Well, one, as, I, as mentioned, it is the most powerful thing Synology have put out in desktop form for a long time, but two, when it comes to a bespoke um, virtual app, uh, virtual platform for in both software of a first and third party, this has got it going. The Synology Virtual Machine Manager software that's been around there for well over a year works beautifully well on this device and you can run lots of fun VMs in this device or business VMs as needed. And the good thing is the Synology Virtual Management software does a really good job of partitioning the hardware inside this device and not just club, 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 and really making the device run poorly. On top of that, its support of those third party apps is fantastic indeed, and it's still one of the best out there for this. Those 12 bays of storage can be all hard drive or part SSD, part hard drive, and enable internal caching, as well as that PCIe slot on the rear giving you the option of 10 GBE. And it's option that's key here because this device doesn't thrust everything out of you in the way the QNAP did and ask you to take everything on board, even the things you don't want and have to pay for them. This is a much more fluid solution to VM users out there that know exactly what they want and don't want to pay for things that they don't. And that's why this is in my top three VM NASs to buy right now at the end of 2018. You don't have to go for this device and just rely on that first party software. Most people use this because of uh, the Synology software only being a year old and relative infancy compared to other applications, you can use this uh, this NAS along with all those third party apps and it runs mwah, beautifully well. So that's why it's in my top three. Moving on to the third place and on to third place and it's another QNAP and another NAS that's over a year old. It's the TVS 1282. Now the TVS 1282 is on this list for several reasons. Much like the first unit it arrives with a whole host of hardware under the bonnet. With a price tag of just over two grand it arrives with eight bays of hard drive storage, four bays of SSD storage and internal M2 SSD bays as well. It has features on it that the first NAS didn't have, such as HDMI 2.0, and it is available in several versions, supporting everything from optical media bays to Thunderbolt connectivity and more. This device is for people that want to leverage in favour of hardware, because the TVS 1282 series, because it comes in different versions, 
gears its hardware a rough similar price tag every time towards different factors. So say you need a VM device where you've got, you need to have an optical bay where all the VMs need to be created from that same drive. This incorporates that if you get the one with the Blu-ray drive. Or you want a virtual machine that doesn't utilize network connectivity and instead uses Thunderbolt connectivity or a VM that has access to a Thunderbolt port. This can do that. So now you've got a VM that can be connected to an external Thunderbolt external uh, drive for you know editing on the fly and use some of that hardware to do it. This is a far more um, a hardware fluid virtual machine NAS compared to the other two. Yes, the CPU inside it, that quad core i7, although a great CPU in sixth and in some cases seventh gen if you shop around, is a great CPU, although not as powerful as that first CPU, that Ryzen, but definitely better than the second one there from that Xeon with regards to rendering. This has got GPU support in a way that the second one didn't. But this is about a more fluid hardware platform. The first NAS supports everything for software and backups of hardware. The second one was everything for software, but less in the hardware department. What this does is give you a balance. So if you're looking for a VM NAS, there's a much, a much smoother middle point between hardware and software flexibility that the QNAP TVS 1282 series is better for you. And again, it opens the door to a lot of different things that other NAS brands don't give you, particularly in the localized field, because this has got three HDMI ports and moreover can be used for QVPC technology, which is this machine, this NAS, although being used as a NAS and all of those VMs, can also run as a standalone PC. And you can even run one of those VMs locally with a keyboard mouse monitor and still keep it network accessible. So that means your PC that you're using live can be accessed anywhere by you. So you can carry on working, up, get a run, better go over there or go to that building Wi-Fi, log back into the same computer and your files are right there where you left them to the millisecond of editing. That's the beauty of that NAS. And those have been my three top virtual machine NASs to buy at the end of 2018. Hope you've enjoyed this. Do shop at the guys at Spam.com. The NAS experts, nearly 25 years experience. They know the deal. Next, visit me at NASCompares.com for free advice, guidance, reviews, and more. And use my free help section on the right-hand side there. And if you've enjoyed this, click like and subscribe to learn more. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.